Julia at your service. So man, today's video, I am currently creating a new program. Doesn't have a title yet, but it is a athletic based program. And this is just one of the workouts from that program, one of the training days from that program. So you know me, man, I'm a former football player, of course. For people new to the channel, former football player, personal trainer now, uh, current power lifter, but I love being athletic, being able to run and jump, skip and hop and all that bull. You know what I'm saying? So from time to time, I like to get away from strong, my power lifting type stuff and get more into athleticism. So this, this training cycle has a lot of, uh, conditioning work in it, mobility work in it, a little bit of everything. Today's workout is how I start my week. It's a power and explosion workout. So. So I, mean, I hope you guys enjoy this now. Of course, with any of my training, any of my programs that I create, if they're good, at some point you will probably see them for purchase. But if this bad boy suck, you will never hear about it again. <laughs> so already, you know, we got Action Figure 1 on sale. Uh, so message me if you want to get that program. E email me. If you want to get that program, that is the strongest man in the gym. Look like it too is what I call or what we heard as power building. It's basically power lifting and aesthetics or bodybuilding combined. Action figure body one. You can purchase that now. We got action figure body two. You can purchase that as well. That is strictly my power lifting and strength program specifically. We got 21 day cut. If you're trying to cut for a shoe, you're trying to cut for the wedding. Trying to cut for anything based off of intermittent fasting and, uh, I mean, excuse me, not intermittent fasting, but based on a juicing diet I came up with. We also got, um, oh, Clark and Bruce, man. I just came out with Clark Plus Bruce, which is my push and pull for strength program. Also have a super shred program as well that I made a long time ago. And if you just want a personalized program strictly for you, you know, you can email me, man, because I do this uh, personalized program for everybody. Everybody in the world. <laughs> Enough for all this talking, man. Let's get on to this power and explosion workout. Let's get on to these games. So a lot of this program is... Symmetry, a lot of this program is core work, a lot of this program is stability. So you will see me do a lot of one arm, single leg type stuff. We usually call that unilateral training. So this first movement here is a dumbbell snatch. One arm at a time, as you can see, I'm starting with that 65 pounds. So I really, really enjoy this move. I think it's pretty difficult and pretty challenging for me. The only thing moving forward I would change is it's tough for the placement of the dumbbell since the dumbbell is outside of my hand. When I do the front version or when I do the, uh, the uh, video camera from the front, you can kind of see how I have to twist my body a little bit to get in a little bit better alignment to be able to pull it. Ideally, I think I need to have the dumbbell directly in front of my knee where my tibia, tibia is at. Okay, this is stupid. It's stupid when you don't even know your own programming. I am not supposed to be doing single leg deadlifts. I actually did three sets. 
and it was very heavy and made my lower back flare up. I wasn't even supposed to be doing it. It was stupid. This move is a great movement, and it is in my program on one of my, one of my symmetry days, athletic symmetry. Not on power explosion. It's no power or no explosion with this movement. I'm t I was tired, man, so I don't know. The last maybe like week, the previous week, I didn't get in the gym at all. Uh, just uh, been super busy, but it's no excuses and nobody cares. So we right back at it like I never left. But yeah, I did three sets, bro. Back was like killing me. It was so stupid. Then I didn't even realize until I was done when I looked at my paper to record how much weight I did. I was like, it's not even on my paper. I wasn't supposed to be doing it. So this is just for the uh, opposite angle for the single arm dumbbell snatch. So we started off just like a deadlift, of course. And you can see when I lose balance, which is actually a pretty good thing. I, I like to see myself lose balance, which means it's pretty challenging for me. I never want to do anything and not get challenged. If it's not, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. I make sure my lights up, my lats are nice and tight, just like I would do in any deadlift. I'm starting below my knee. This is pretty close to where I would start a deadlift, maybe a little bit higher, which you can see my hip height is a little higher than I would be in a deadlift. And I'm really, really, really focusing on pushing them hips forward like I'm hunching. And I know it's kind of funny to say sometimes and to think about, but man, it's really like you throwing that thing at them. You know what I'm saying? Like you slanging that thing, you know what I'm saying? Because really when it comes to hip hinging and pulling your hips forward, it's basically just hip hinging and sticking your butt out, keeping a vertical shin angle. And then when you're pulling that hip forward, you're really trying to do the reverse motion. So basically that's all I was trying to do. This is heavy, I've ever heaviest I've done this movement for a five. Uh, I think next thing what I'll do though, the only, only change I make is I will start the weight directly in front of my tibia on my and my kneecap versus going to the side. And doing any things one arm, especially when you're going overhead, really challenges the core. And also it's going to work through any imbalances that I have from right to left. And I do have a ton of them. Some of the ways you get imbalances are just life, but some of them are pulling mixed grip. If you are a mixed grip deadlifter, over time you will develop some imbalances. How you carry your grocery, how you carry your uh, book bag, how you carry your gym bag, you will develop some imbalances. Let's take a quick break and just give a shout out to my back, back gains. Here we go here. Look at these back gains. I'm not even doing the bodybuilding program, but <laughs> yeah, buddy. I still got some gains in that back, right? But back to what I was saying. Yeah, so we can develop imbalance. This exercise is called ankling. This is just to develop some explosive strength in your ankles. I'm basically just jumping up and down, man. Not letting my heels touch the ground. As simple as that. Three sets, 25 seconds. This week. Next week, I'll probably go up to 30. Hat almost came off. Can't let that happen, fam. Can't let that come off. Look at that hair swinging. <laughs> All right, now we get into some jumping stuff. This is a single leg jump with a dumbbell. Doing this program, man, I'm not increasing the height of the jump. I'm merely increasing the weight that's pulling me down. It is a specific reason why I'm doing that and not going with height. When you go with something that's higher, what end up happening is you end up landing in a squatted position. So really, all it's doing is improve, is testing your flexibility at the top of a box jump. So what I want you to do is keep the height the same so I have minimal knee flexion, minimal knee bend, but really had to explode off the ground with the additional weight. So I wear 180 something, and you'll see it in this video. So with that 20 more pounds, I'm now jumping with the size of a 200 pound person. And then again, this is unilaterally because I'm really loading the weight on my right side or left side. Now notice the hip hinge, swing and kick motion I'm doing. I'm using that to develop some momentum. When I'm talking about being an athlete, man, it's about getting your body to work together. Athletically, it's very small amount of things that we will do just standing and jumping. Vertical jump, box jump, it's not an athletic move. Think about it. We're on the basketball floor. When you're playing hockey, 
when you're playing football, when you're playing tennis, when do you just stand in one spot and jump as far as you can? Never. We're always moving. We're always generating the movement from the hips. So that's what I'm doing. Simulating, generating the movement from my hips. Hip hinge, explode. Hip hinge, explode. And so now I'm up, now I'm up to the highest so far, 30 extra pounds. So I'm simulating if I wore 210 pounds, single leg jump at basically 210 pounds, minus whatever my leg is. And if you go to Fast Style Nutrition, you can actually find out how much your leg weighs, actually. We got a machine called the N-Body. Shameless plug for Fast Style, but I don't care. I work there, and they pay me, so whatever. And with this unilateral training, make sure you know, you're just doing right side, left side, right side, left side, going back and forth to make sure it's appropriate. These niggas won't hold me back. These niggas won't hold me back. These niggas won't hold me back. These won't hold me back. Jumping is exhausting. Hey, it's exhausting. <laughs> I need pre-workout, post-workout, intra workout BCAAs, pump and grow, rhino, glutamine, aspartame. Hey, I need every kind of ting and amino acid, battery acid. Oh, no. Jesus. Take the wheel. And next up is a overhead lunge jump. This will be considered a unilateral movement as well. But the reason why I'm going overhead, doing things overhead promotes proper posture. When it comes to being powerful and when it comes to be athletically symmetrical, when we can keep our back in neutral spine, which doesn't mean straight. When we keep our back and our head and neck in neutral spine, we're more powerful. As an athlete though, as you start to get injured and as you start to have all these different things happen to your body, we do not work properly. Our body is designed to compensate and continue working. So doing things like overhead carries, overhead lunge jumps, overhead squats, different things like this promote proper posture. So now I'm moving in the correct way and also this will limit my chance of injury. We call this being in uh, thoracic spine and I call this having proper athletic posture and proper posture. And you will see when people squat and daily sometimes too, they get their neck out of alignment. I like to have my neck in neutral, in neutral as well. My cervical spine is part of my spine. And so you will not see me look up to the ceiling or you'll not see me look at my toes. My gaze will be out in front, but my chin will be tucked so I can have a neutral cervical spine, neutral thoracic spine. Of course, always that lumbar spine, man, needs to be nice and neutral too. When I the 85 pounds, I'm getting kind of heavy again. I'm pretending like I weigh over 200 pounds in this movement. It's not about height. It's about being explosive off the ground. I'm not going for maximum explosion. And I want to get some upper body explosiveness in each week. So I do some, some form of pushing explosion. And I will add some pulling explosion in there as the weeks go along. I didn't in this particular week. And then I did some upside down push-ups. And this is not a power, I mean not an explosion movement. But I really did this, man, and you can see from the front as some of my symmetrical stuff. Again, when you do overhead thing, and this is an overhead movement, it promotes a neutral and straight spine. When those things happen, you actually get to see where you're limited and see where you have imbalances. And like I said, when I go from the front, you'll be able to see from the front how I'm a little bit unbalanced. And now this is just a box jump, weighted box jump. I have been doing it with one arm. With just, not one arm hop, with one dumbbell in one arm. This week I switched up to doing, uh, having a dumbbell in both arms to see if I felt the difference and to make sure it was safe. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to have in my program, uh, if my program come out for purchase this program. I'm not sure if I'm going to have it one arm or two arm. I'm not sure if the benefits right now, how I feel, and if it's safe enough to be continually doing it that way. So... This is a 80 pound jump and I'm still generating from the hips. My knee bend is minimal. My hip hinge is huge. You have to generate these movements from the hips. So back to what I was saying, you can tell in this video, I'm actually pushing to my right a little bit. I'm a right arm, left leg dominant, male species, alpha male species. <laughs> So I push that way, and so 
So I will try to correct that over the duration of my upside down push-ups by doing several things that I share with you guys later. Last set of the day, man, 100 pounds. So like always, man, don't be stingy with your gains, guys. Like, comment, and share this video. It's always, man, it's your boy, Shady Washington Jr. And I'm out. Peace. You see that goddamn show? I'm coming through. Hate it. Curses up. That's what I do. Youngest.